very small houses have become all the rage in recent years as some people trade in their traditional lifestyles for an ostensibly simpler option, places that are less than 400 square feet. Well, today, there's a twist. Tiny houses are being seen as a way to give homeless and low-income people the chance at home ownership. Jeffrey Brown visited Detroit to find out more for our ongoing series on poverty and opportunity in America, Chasing the Dream. They may be tiny, but they have lofty goals, putting roofs over the heads of people who never dreamed they could own a home. The idea for Detroit's tiny home project was born in an unlikely place, the floor of an old warehouse. People couldn't imagine what 300 square foot would look like well, when I mean, we first could started. You? I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so we came out and, and measured it out and taped it out and then yeah. thought, well, where would I put the sofa and my bed and is this enough room? And we decided it would be. And now it is. All right. So here this it is. is our uh, one of the studios. Studio there's, meaning there's no bedroom. Correct. Yeah. So Reverend Faith Fowler is a pastor and community activist uh -huh. working to create jobs and provide homes for the city's most needy. Some have large front porches, some have decks or patios in the back, all have a nice backyard so they could have a dog yeah. uh, or a barbecue or just sit outside and listen to the traffic. <laughs> Each of the seven homes built so far has a kitchen, living room, washer dryer, and bathroom. Several have separate bedrooms. Fowler's nonprofit Cash Community Social Services purchased 25 vacant lots from the city for $15,000. They're bright spots, literally, in a neighborhood with many vacant, crumbling houses next to one of Detroit's busy freeways. We wanted this to be a part of a larger neighborhood mm -hmm. um, rather than being segregated or separated or isolated outside of a neighborhood. Yeah, because you drive around and much of this neighborhood is still very blighted, right? It, uh, uh, often people are worried about gentrification. I'm not so concerned yet. Not an issue here, <laughs> no. right? No. There hasn't been a new building in this neighborhood since 1974, and it was a garage. So you can imagine the excitement of seeing houses go up like a barn raising here as people are coming to watch and sometimes even at offering to volunteer. A volunteer workforce built each home in about five weeks using donated goods and services. That kept the cost to around forty to fifty thousand dollars. The idea here is how to overcome something that many of us take for granted, how to buy your own home when you have few or no financial assets and when the whole notion of owning a home seems impossible. For those living below the poverty line, and 40% of Detroit's residents do, Fowler says there are plenty of barriers to home ownership. They don't have enough money to get them through a crisis, so your car breaks down, or your hours get cut, or you get laid off, or somebody in your family gets sick. All of a sudden, you don't have enough financial security to get through it and so all of a sudden you're in a crisis that you may not recover from for years and decades to come. This gives people something that they own. Right. That they can uh, have the pride of ownership, that they can have the dignity of, of using as a home even while they're renting and ultimately something they can use as collateral if they have a crisis. The new inhabitants here will rent to own. They'll pay a dollar a square foot in rent. They're also required to take monthly financial literacy classes and volunteer for the neighborhood watch. After seven years, they'll own their homes. The tiny home trend is booming, fueled in part by cable design shows. These are so cute. But on those shows, people have made a choice to downsize and live simply. So that's cool. The it's Detroit Project has a different purpose. We were really looking for a way to give them a ladder. I mean, they've got to climb it. They've got to do the work, mm -hmm. but uh, we're providing the ladder. The tiny homes are also smack in the middle of a built-in support structure. Fowler's nonprofit runs apartment buildings for people transitioning from being homeless. There's a bike borrowing service to help people get around. And there are jobs at Green Industries for people re-entering the workforce. The company recycles abandoned tires and more to fashion doormats, flip-flops, and keychains, with the old English D for the Detroit Tigers. Kevin Taylor makes coasters out of recycled glass. 
He credits his job here as a lifesaver after struggling with addiction and spending time in prison. Well, it changed my life. I'm, I'm employed. I'm, I have my own apartment at this point in life, uh, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, learning how to live again. What does that mean? Well, that means uh, waking up in the morning, doing normal things that normal people do, having coffee, breakfast, get ready to go to work, go to work, come home. That's the idea behind the tiny homes as well. And there's one more idea, that each should look and feel different. So often when you're considering affordable housing, it's ugly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a box or a rectangle, it's identical. Uh, there's no colors, there's no design. Mm -hmm. So again, we wanted it to be attractive and to instill pride in people. And so different architectural styles, including so far, Cape Cod, modern, and shotgun. Ed Weir, an architect from Ann Arbor, donated his services to help design a future home in a Victorian style. Victorian, it's a, it's a classic residential, American residential style. And, um, you know, a lot of people are drawn to it, very ornate, um, a lot of detailing. Um, and so people just are, brought, are attracted to it. Yeah. It just, it appeals to them. So, you know, obviously we had to scale it back and uh, um, kind of try to, how do we draw those things into a, into a small house, into a small format. It's hardly the norm for low-income housing, but, says Weir, that's the point. It's a, a refined, um, elegant, tiny house that somebody would love to live in. And it feels like home. What says home to you? Says that's home. the final question. Really, that's the right? final question. Yeah. And I think the goal was that in that we've created something that says home. Mm -hmm. And who will call it home? After a series of open houses, 122 people applied to live in the tiny homes. Fowler is waiting on the city to give the green light before announcing the seven chosen to move in. In the meantime, 18 more tiny homes are on the way. It's a small number of small homes, but a big idea. It's really about home ownership and the American dream for people who stopped dreaming. We really were looking at not only eliminating homelessness, but with dealing with poverty for people. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in Detroit, Michigan.